Hey everyone, here's yet another medical terminology practice problem lesson. This is actually the third practice problem lesson for the uh, medical terminology, the basics and anatomy lesson series. So again, if you haven't watched the medical, term medical terminology, the basics or the anatomy lessons, I would suggest watching those before proceeding with this practice problem lesson. So again, we're going to go through more practice problems to get a better understanding of medical terminology. So the first word we're going to look at is blepharospasm. So blepharospasm, if we break it down, blepharo, blepharo itself means eyelid. And spasm, well, that's pretty easy. Spasm means spasm. So when we put this together, blepharospasm means a spasm of the eyelid. The next word we're going to look at is anxiolytic. So you might have heard of anxiolytic medications or anxiolytic drugs and when you actually look at the word you can break it down into its subcomponents so anxio anxio means anxiety and lytic lytic is similar to lysis it, it means destruction so this literally means or anxiolytic literally means destruction of anxiety but in fact it is a class of anxiety reducing medications the next word we're going to look at is ophthalmoplegia. So when we break this word down again, ophthalmo, ophthalmo means eye, and plegia, plegia you can think of paraplegia, plegia means paralysis, so ophthalmoplegia, when you put it together, it means paralysis of the eye. The next word we're going to look at is chelitis. So we might not remember what keel means, but you know, you can remember what itis means, so it's inflammation of something. So what is chelitis an inflammation of? Well, when we break it down, keel, keel means, or kilo means lips. So again, we know that itis means inflammation. So when we put it together, it means inflammation of the lips. So chelitis means an inflammation of the lips. The next word we're going to look at is cystocentesis. So again, if we break cystocentesis down, cysto means bladder, and centesis means removal of fluid or aspiration. So when we put it together, cystocentesis means a removal of fluid or aspiration of bladder contents. The next word is pyometra, and pyometra when we break it down again, pio, we've learned pio means pus. So what does metra or metra mean? Well, it means uterus. So you can think of metrium or endometrium, myometrium, the metrium, metria or metra means uterus. So pyometra or pyometra, when you put it together, means an abnormal condition of pus in the uterus. The next word we're going to look at is dermatomycosis. Dermatomycosis. So it all, we can already see some um, familiar parts of this word. So derm or dermato, we, we already know this means skin So or something relating to the dermis. Mike, you might forget what myc or myco means, but it really actually means fungi or fungus. And osis... We know osis means abnormal condition, so dermatomycosis is an abnormal condition of fungus on the skin or a fungal infection of the skin. The next word we're going to look at is psychosomatic. So what does psychosomatic mean when we break it down? Well, psycho, psycho means mind or mental. And somatic, somatic um, soma means body, or somato means body. Ik means relating to or pertaining to. So somatic means relating to a body or relating to the body or relating to a body condition. So when we put it together, psychosomatic means a medical condition relating to both the mind and body. And in fact, we use the word psychosomatic when we look at body illnesses that are typically caused by mental factors such as stress. So sometimes you can say that a medical condition is psychosomatic in origin. The next word we're going to look at is polyhydramnios. 
So what does polyhydramnios mean? Well, this might be a little bit tricky to figure out what this actually means. So uh, we can break it down again. We know that poly, poly, we've seen this many times. Poly means many or a lot or too much or, or too many. Hydra or hydro, we know that means water or fluid. So what does amnios mean? Well, amnios, you can think of amniotic. Um, and this typically refers to amniotic fluid. So amniotes, you can think of the amnion or amniotic sac or amniotic. And when we put this all together, polyhydramnios means an abnormal condition of a lot or too much amniotic fluid. And this means that there's too much amniotic fluid in the amniotic sac. The next word we're going to look at is mucopolysaccharidoses. So this is a big word. So what does mucopolysaccharidoses mean when we break it all down? So we can first start with muco. Muco means mucus or mucosal. Poly, poly means many or a lot. So um, these still really don't give us a clue as to what this really is. But when we look at saccharide or saccharid, this means sugars. So when we look at what we've looked at so far, mucopolysaccharide, polysaccharide are long chains of sugars. Mucopolysaccharides are long chains of sugars that are on a mucosal membrane. So what does the oses represent? Well, oses is really a plural form of osis. So when we put it all together, mucopolysaccharidoses. So when we put it all together, what does mucopolysaccharidoses mean? Well, it actually means medical conditions involving glycosaminoglycans metabolism. So glycosaminoglycans are actually mucopolysaccharides. So the oses represents the medical conditions and the mucopolysaccharides represents the glycosaminoglycans. And these conditions are due to absent or malfunctioning enzymes required to break down glycosaminoglycans. So we get issues in glycosaminoglycan metabolism in these kind of conditions, in conditions known as mucopolysaccharidoses. The next word we're going to look at is transmural. And we've seen trans before. Trans means across or penetrating. We can think of transatlantic. We can think of transfer. And mural... Mural means relating to a wall. So when we put this together, transmural means across or penetrating a wall. And typically it means penetrating or going across a muscle wall. So transmural means across or penetrating a muscle wall. The next word we're going to talk about or we're going to look at is brachiocephalic. So what does brachiocephalic mean? Well, brachiocephalic, if we break it down, we've seen brachio before. Brachio means arm. And we've seen cephal. Cephal means the head. And ick, we remember ick means pertaining to. So when we put it all together, brachiocephalic means pertaining to the arm and head. So in this word, we can think of the brachiocephalic artery or the basic brachiocephalic trunk. This is the um, one of the large arteries that branches off from the, the aortic arch, and it supplies both the arm and the head. So that's why we call it the brachiocephalic trunk or the brachiocephalic artery. The next word we're going to look at is echocardiogram. So we may have heard this word before in colloquial speech, but what does it actually mean? Well, when we break it down again, echo... Echo means sound. Cardio, we know cardio means heart. And gram, what does gram actually mean? Well, gram is actually a recording or a record. And echocardiogram literally means a recording of the heart using sound waves. So that's what echocardiogram actually means. The next word we're going to look at is otorhinolaryngology. So this is a big word. So again, it's it's easy when we break it down, though. So when we look at it piece by piece, so the first part, if we look at auto, auto means ear or relating to the ear. Rhino, 
rhino uh, actually means nose. When we look at larynge or larynx, you can think of the throat or the larynx. And ology, we've learned that ology means the study of. So when we put it all together, otorhinolaryngology means the study of ear, nose, and throat diseases. So that's what otolaryngology means. It means the study of ear, nose, and throat diseases. The next word we're going to look at is oculoplethysmography. So what does oculoplethysmography mean? Well, again, this is a very large word. So again, break it down into whatever you can or whatever you understand. So we can look at the first portion of the word oculo. So oculo, you can think of eye. And if you look at the end of the word graphy, you can think of it's something to do with recording or measurement, right? But what does the plethysmo mean? Plethysmo means pressure. And like we discussed, graphy means measurement. So oculoplethysmography simply means a measurement of the pressure inside the eye. The next word we're going to look at is extracorporeal. Extracorporeal. So what does this word mean? So again, if we break it down, extra, extra means outside. It's the opposite of intra. So extra is means outside. Corp or corpus or corpore means body. And the eel portion of the word means pertaining to. So when we put it all together, it means pertaining to outside the body. The next word we're going to look at is anisocytosis. So what does anisocytosis mean? Well, again, breaking it down, the an portion of the word an means not or absent. The next portion of the word is iso, and iso means equal. So you might have heard of the word isotonic, or you might have heard of isosceles triangles. These all relate to equal, or something that is equal. And cite, again we've seen this before, cite or cyto means cell, and osis again means abnormal condition. So when we add it all together, it means an abnormal condition of unequally shaped cells. So anisocytosis means an abnormal condition of unequally shaped cells. So the next word we're going to look at is photophobia. So what does photophobia actually mean? Well, when we break it down, photo simply means light. In phobia, we know phobia means fear of. So when we put it together, it literally means fear of light. But when we actually use the word photophobia, it actually doesn't simply mean fear of light. It actually means something else. And it actually means abnormal intolerance, discomfort, or pain in the eyes when exposed to light. So it's not the same as a, a psychological disorder of fear of light. It's actually more of a physiological problem with the eyes when exposed to light. The next word we're going to look at is cryptophthalmos. And when we break this word down, crypt means hidden and ophthalmos means eyes. So simply put, it means hidden eye or hidden eyes. And this is actually a condition where there's an apparent absence of the eyes due to failure of normal eyelid formation. The next word is nephrocalcinosis. So when we break this word down, what does it mean? Well, again, we break it down. So nephro, we've learned that nephro means kidney. Calci or calcin means calcium. And osis, again, means abnormal condition. So what does that mean when we put it all together? Well, it simply means an abnormal condition of calcium deposits in the kidney. So that's a pretty easy word, nephrocalcinosis. And the last word is phlebosclerosis. So this one might be a little more tricky. So what does phlebosclerosis mean? Well, again, just breaking it down. So the first part of that word, phlebo. So you might think of phlebotomy or phlebotomist. Phlebo means vein or veins. Now, what does sclere mean? Well, sclere, you might... I've heard of 
arteriosclerosis, or you might have heard of you might have heard of uh, atherosclerosis. Sclera means hardening or thickening, and again, osis means abnormal condition. So when you put it all together, what does it mean? Well, it simply means an abnormal condition of hardening or thickening of veins, and this is. In fact, uh, phlebosclerosis is, an, is a rare degenerative condition uh, that usually typically occurs in young males where the walls of certain veins thicken. Anyways, guys, that was another lesson um, on practice problems. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please like and subscribe for more videos like this one. And as always, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.